Hey, how you doing? Hopefully you're having a great day. My name is Emilio, I work in tech and I absolutely love it. And I absolutely love the Synology NAS. I've played with a whole bunch and if you're new to my channel, go check out some of my other Synology NAS videos because we love Synology and we do a lot of videos around the Synology products. But in this video, we're opening and setting up a DS218 Synology NAS. Great little two bay NAS. We're gonna be showing you that today. Do what you do across the socials by subscribing, clicking on the button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So before we start setting up the DS218 Synology NAS, I wanna let you know about my full length training course about all things Synology. Now this video, we're talking about how to unbox and set up a DS218, but then the journey only begins in learning how to use the Synology NAS. So I've got hours worth of content that I know that you will definitely find helpful. You can check it out in my show notes in my description. So check that out, I know that you'll definitely find it helpful. So what we're gonna do right now is let's open up our DS218 and set it up. So we've just taken the Synology out of the box. This is the DS218, of course it's a two bay NAS. Inside of it we've got a Intel Celeron CPU, 64 bit. Uh, it also has a uh, two gig worth of memory inside, but you can expand that if you so choose to. And of course this unit, you can actually insert two discs into it. So two three and a half inch or two and a half inch SATA uh, hard drives or um, SSDs as well, which is really, really nice. And the great thing is because it has two slots in there, uh, you can insert essentially two 10 terabyte hard drives and essentially making the raw capacity of 20 terabytes, which is really good either for a small business or even potentially at home as well. So you'll see on the very top right, we've got our status LED, you've got a LAN LED, essentially letting you know the activity on your network. And you've got your couple of LEDs for disc one and disc two, letting you know if there's activity on those discs. We've got a front USB port, as well as a reset switch and the power switch. And of course, what you're seeing right here is just the cover on the front of the unit, which we will then later open it up and then insert the hard drives inside. On the back, we've got our big vent for the fan right there. You've got your ethernet port, essentially an RJ45 gigabit LAN port, dual USBs, similar to the front, they're all, all three of them are USB three. And then you've also got the little slot there to actually lock the unit and the power so you can actually power the unit as well. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. As I said, it's just a cover on the front and then you have the two hard drives there exposed. Now out of the box, this unit of course does not come with any hard drives. So you will have to remove those two uh, by pushing that and then you just pull essentially the hard drive enclosure, the casing out to be able to then insert the actual hard drive itself. So with the two hard drive enclosures removed, you've now got this big empty cavity. And you can see down the very back there, you've actually got the two connectors for your SATA hard drives. Now, as long as the hard drives are either a three and a half or two and a half inch SATA, you can insert those in. But in my case, I recommend using NAS grade hard drives. You're gonna get better performance and they're more catered to the NAS unit. So you're literally gonna grab those hard drives and then put them into the enclosures and then slide those in to the actual NAS. So you're going to need to ensure that those SATA ports are actually lined up with the SATA ports inside and making sure that the hard drive slides along the groove inside the NAS and then you slide that hard drive in and click it into place. And you do that for both of them. Hard drives in, you wanna put the cover back on and then you can power the unit up, plug it into ethernet and then we'll actually power the unit on. Your four LED lights are now on, including the status light, which is now flashing. And now the NAS is essentially booting up. And then we then go and actually get it up and running and connect to it. You'll obviously need to ensure that the computer that you're connecting to the NAS on is on the same network as the NAS. You then open up a browser on your computer and you're gonna to navigate to find.synology.com on your browser. It'll scan your network searching for your Synology device. So after a bit of time, your NAS should be detected. It should show up right here. If it hasn't, you'll have to go back and check this again, making sure that there's no issues on the network, on the firewall, on the routers. But if it's detected it, great. We can now click on connect. Accept those terms and conditions. Continue on the privacy statement. And we can then begin the setup of our NAS. So we're gonna select setup. 
We are then asked to install the Disk Station Manager or the DSM, essentially it's the operating system, the software for your Synology NAS. You sort of need that to be able to connect to it and do everything that you need to do. So we're gonna install now. Now, because this is a brand new NAS, we're hoping that the hard drives that you've installed are either brand new or you're happy to have all that data erased. So it is gonna completely erase the data on those two disks. If you're happy, we can say okay. The DSM software will then start to install. We'll let that do its thing. And then we are done. It'll install the software, it'll then reboot. And now we have to start creating the first administrator account for our NAS. So we need to input here the server name. So what is the name that you want to give your NAS? This is the name that is gonna be discoverable on your network, a username and a password. So something that is unique, something that is strong, a good password because this is gonna have administrator rights into it. Selecting next and then preparing storage space will commence. Now this next step is optional. Essentially what Quick Connect lets you do is as it says, makes it easy to access your Synology NAS without port forwarding. So it opens up your NAS a little bit out to the internet. For me, I'm gonna say skip this step, but you can install that and follow that if you so choose to. We then have some recommended packages that can be installed onto the NAS. Essentially some software that will be bundled on top of your DSM. Essentially just apps that are gonna be installed within your operating system of the Synology NAS. These are really good, so I'm gonna select next and get those installed. Another area for you to accept those terms and conditions for those package center software packages. And then we are done, we are all set. Now we have logged in and here we are, we are now within our DSM itself. So this is all ready to go. There's some information here if you do wanna go and configure this around device analytics, if you wanna be able to send information to the developers, you can acknowledge these, you can say yes, you do or you don't. And then it'll give you a few tips around what your NAS features are, some of the software, how, how you use it, all of those sort of things. So with DSM installed and some software packages installed, we now need to configure the disks. So we're gonna select our storage manager, which you can access from the very top left-hand corner of that main menu. So the storage manager lets you create those disk pools, the storage pools, the volumes, the RAID groups. And you'll see that right here, it's actually already gone and configured a volume and the storage pool accordingly based on those two disks. But you can delete those and recreate them if you so want to, but it's out of the box, it does it all for you. So that's really, really helpful. So some other settings have also been configured in the control panel, which you can access from the main menu you'll see a whole bunch of areas in here, including some shared folders, which have already been predefined for us. So you'll see it's created a homes, a music, a photos, a, a video folder, a shared folder essentially. You'll see that some file services have been turned on, including SMB, which of course is used to access uh, the shares from a PC or a Mac. And that's the path, you'll see that little backslash backslash John Smith NAS to be able to access that from a Windows PC. The user area lets you go and create new users. You'll see that there is the John Smith account that we created, but you can create additional user administrator accounts, other accounts if you so need to. Now something that is very important is to go into the network area right here and actually set what's called a static IP address for your NAS. By default, this IP address which I've got right here was found because of my DHCP server that is running. So I wanna go and actually assign myself a static IP address for this NAS. So select the network interface tab at the top. Here is my connected LAN. I'm gonna select edit on that one and then actually go and select use manual configuration. So I've entered a new IP address myself, a subnet mask, gateway, DNS server, everything that is now static, it will not change because of DHCP. And then we're gonna select okay. And that's how to set up your NAS. So the Synology NAS is now set up, it's done, it's ready to go. Now your learning journey begins. And as I said at the start, check out my description where I've got a full length Synology NAS training course. We go into a lot of detail around all the features of your Synology NAS. So in the show notes, check it out. I know you will definitely find it helpful, but that's it. Do what you do in the socials by liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking on my face right over there. And check out some of my other videos right over there so that you don't miss out on anything. This channel, we talk about all things tech. But thanks so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time.